I'm Scott Al Miller. This is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. I get a lot of questions about why we chose Nicaragua, of course, but we also get a surprising number that are very specifically why we didn't choose Costa Rica. For us, this is a surprising question because Costa Rica wasn't on our short list, but we did put in 10 years of very careful analysis, traveling around the world and living abroad in many different countries. And we, we were very uh, clear about our mission and what our objectives were, and we worked very hard to select the countries and places that made the most sense for us. And Nicaragua was a very intentional decision. But a lot of people wonder what made Costa Rica not the better choice. So today we're going to talk about why we didn't put Costa Rica on our shortlist for living abroad. We're going to get to that right after the bump. We knew we wanted to live abroad as much as 20 years ago, but in 2011, we began a very conscious effort to research exactly where was likely to make sense for us uh, living, um, basically with the entire world as an option. We selected a number of places in Europe, a number of places in Latin America, and we have a lot of you know needs for language and family and time zone and work and access uh, for working abroad and things like that. So there's a lot of reasons why uh, Asia and a lot of island nations were just ruled out on technical basis. The logistics of living in those places would not work out well for us. So it's not to say that there aren't amazing places in those regions, in Africa and Asia and so forth, but for us, for the things that we need in raising our children and, and still being of working age and needing to deal with uh, careers and such, uh, Europe and Latin America simply became the target areas for us. That's what made sense. We put in, uh, starting in 2012, a tremendous amount of time abroad, both traveling heavily and living abroad for a very long time, uh, testing out many different places. And we started with obviously the entire world. We honed it to a couple continents, and then we honed that to countries that really seemed like they would make sense, and then really researched regions within those, and then experimented with the majority of the ones that we could get to whether just short term to give it a try for a couple days and see if it was worth putting in more time or in some isolated cases where we were able to actually moving there and putting in months with it being our home base. We gave up our home in the United States. We actually fully moved the whole family, made our life there, grocery shopped, got an apartment, got a car, did all the things, even if relatively briefly, so that we could move from country to country or region to region, really get to know that area and make really solid determinations and then course correct from there. And I think it was a very good process uh, for a lot of people. This is a lot of work that may not make sense. You may just want to find a place that's good enough early on and, and of course, put in your research, but uh, move a bit more quickly so that you can actually get to the place uh, that you finally want to be. We really enjoy the process of looking for that right home and, and learning about all these different places and cultures and so forth. So for us, it was, it was a wonderful experience with our kids, getting to know the world uh, and, and exploring it uh, very firsthand. And at the end, we chose Nicaragua. But this video is why didn't we chose Costa, choose Costa Rica? Now, of course, we ruled it out very early on. So that, I think, is important for people to understand. Because Nicaragua and Costa Rica are physically so close uh, together, obviously they share a border, but the majority of the expats of Nicaragua live very close to the Costa Rican border. And the majority of the expats in Costa Rica live maybe not super close to the Nicaraguan border, but kind of in the middle or towards that direction. So the two have a very strong affinity that the people who are in either one, for the most part, are always thinking about the other one. It's kind of like if you live in New York or you live in Ontario, Canada, Ontario tends to think of the U.S. quite a bit because it's so close. And New York and that region of the U.S. tends to think about Canada quite a lot because it's so close. Whereas if you live in Texas, oh, yeah, sure, you know Canada's up there, but it's Mexico that's important to you. So that alone causes these two places to simply be associated with each other. So naturally, people think, well, if there's so many times that people are like, well, Costa Rica or Nicaragua, they're kind of, you know, the weather's the same, the geography is the same, the language is the same, the history is the same. They were both part of the same uh, colonial heritage. They were part of the same liberation from colonial heritage. They're part of the same breakup and and independent post-colonial state heritage for a while and in the time since then. 
They are very closely related for many obvious reasons. And even going back to pre-Columbian times, this was more or less a single region, with Nicaragua basically being the hinterland, the countryside of the same civilization and cultural group where Costa Rica was the much smaller but, uh, but, but more densely packed big city. So these have always been regions that have a lot of association with each other. But in modern times, they really are vastly different. And while both are great places and they do share a lot of this heritage and history and uh, location and and vacationers often jump the border and explore both together because it's so easy to do so, especially if you're going to see the Nicoya Peninsula in Costa Rica, which is a really, really major place for tourists and expats to be based. Of course, Nicoya, or maybe not of course, Nicoya in Costa Rican slang simply means Nicaraguan. So that's the Nicaraguan Peninsula right against southern Nicaragua. And the number one place for tourists to go in Nicaragua is either San Juan del Sur, most likely place for you to live, or uh, Granada, which is still towards that direction a little bit, uh, most likely for you to visit. They're incredibly close to the Nicoya Peninsula, and all that region has a lot of cross-border traffic. So obviously, it's easy for people who are not living here or not making living decisions to see this as, well, it must be a just, you select this region and then pick which one of these two flavors is the way you want to approach it. But I think rarely does that actually happen. Uh, there's a lot of cases, I think, where people go to Costa Rica because Costa Rica is seen as the obvious choice, a lot of people never evaluate other places. They just go, well, I'm interested in Latin America, therefore it's Costa Rica. Then they go there, and then when they look at Nicaragua, it is a, oh, wait, how does this compare to where I am? And that's kind of natural because Americans get so much marketing, either for Mexico or uh, Costa Rica, but Mexico is much more like come visit, you know, do Cancun, do the weekend, all-inclusive resort. Costa Rica has a really strong message of this is a place where you can come be a digital nomad or where you can come and be an expat. Uh, and so that is how Americans view Latin American relocation, uh, retirement, those kinds of things. Uh, they simply start with Costa Rica as a nearly foregone conclusion. And then that there are other options that may actually be better for some people often comes as a surprise and almost always comes as a course correction to Costa Rica. But because we didn't enter it from a what marketing have we seen, we did our research and know, knew all the country options and were looking very broadly. Costa Rica for us was never on that list, but why? I think understanding what draws people to Costa Rica in the first place automatically will explain a lot of why it was not of interest to us. Costa Rica is an absolutely fantastic country. And I want to be clear that one of the reasons that Nicaragua is such a good location for a great number of expats who live here uh, is because Costa Rica is so close. Costa Rica offers a heavily tourist environment with many tourist infrastructure type things, hotels, major airports, resorts, restaurants, shopping, uh, uh, resort, uh, not resorts, but, but um, amusement parks or nature parks and those kinds of things. There's a lot of activities based around tourists. That is an amazing thing to have nearby. Just ask Georgia, if you live in Georgia, being able to vacation in Florida easily, is a benefit to living in Georgia. Oh, you wanna to go to Disney World? It's almost as easy to go from Georgia as it is from Florida, but you don't have to deal with being in Florida. So that can be seen as a big thing. Uh, and so that's that's kind of how we see Costa Rica. It is a very touristy zone. It is full of tourists. It is full of Americans. It is full of people who are speaking English. It is, and this should almost be super obvious, even if you know nothing about Costa Rica, it is, incredibly expensive and it is incredibly americanized and it has to be this is this is what makes costa rica what it is along with their you know traditional culture and their uh, weather and their uh, commitment to the environment which are all fantastic uh, but they have so many tourists and that is such a completely core part of their economy that the country is just overrun with tourists. There are tourists everywhere. And by having that many tourists, it guarantees that the prices have to go way up, that not in any way supported by natural, organic, local economy. It doesn't make any sense in the grand scheme of things. It is purely like being in Orlando. Everything costs a premium. And if you don't specifically want to be in that tourist zone, paying those really high prices rarely benefits you to a great degree. You're just, you're just going to get less for your money. But 
there is the possibility that it will also create more infrastructure and have more restaurants. So there are benefits to that. So it, it's not 100% negative, but it's a strong negative that by having everything be so much more expensive, unless you have unlimited funds, you're likely to be impacted by that. And uh, because everything is touristy, just like Orlando, there's this unbelievable amount of just American culture because there needs to be. There's so many tourists, they can't have uh, an expectation that tourists are going to learn the language or are going to adapt or are going to put up with things because the bulk of foreign tourists from North America want something that is very Americanized or very Canadianized. They want something that is very straightforward, that the things are written in English, that they uh, don't need to adapt to local culture, that they can do things like they did in North America, not think twice about it and have everything handled for them. This is the nature of places like Cancun, right? When you go to places that are just completely focused on American tourists, they have to be Americanized. I, I just, it should be obvious, but I understand why this may not be something that people think through. And people obviously unlikely think through just how big Costa Rica is, which is not very. They have a population of just over 5 million people, which is reasonable for the region, but that is a very small native population, considering the number of tourists that are there and expats that are there, it means that the country is heavily influenced by those people. Whereas other countries nearby, such as Honduras or Guatemala or Nicaragua, while we have tourism, they represent a small percentage of the overall population. And so when you go about daily life in the country, sure, you can go to San Juan del Sur and notice all the tourists. But if you don't specifically go to places that Nicaraguans rarely go to, to find the tourist, you can easily go about weeks or months of time in the country and never encounter an expat or a tourist. That's very different than Costa Rica, where yes, you could go out of your way to avoid them, but in most cases, the expat or tourist uh, culture is going to be in your face all the time. It permeates nearly all of society. And a great way to, to check that if you're just interested in exploring how this works, of course, beach areas are going to lean heavily towards expats and tourists. However, if you come to Nicaragua, there's lots of beach areas that don't really do that. You'll always find someone, but you can go to lots of regions in Nicaragua and be just surprised at how few foreigners there are. But in Costa Rica, that would always be tourists. But that's kind of setting an expectation and like, like contriving the scenario. Instead, go to the capitals, the 2 million people or 1.3 million people of San Jose or Managua and compare what it's like going around the city. In both of these cases, you have major capital cities that have to be populated majority by their local populations. This is where people are working in offices and doing all the things that keep a country running, keeping a normal economy going, having all, just all those services that the nation needs. And when you do that in, in Costa Rica, you still find that everywhere you go, there are tourists and expats in every inch of the city. Everything still has them as a part of culture, even when you have this massive local population trying to offset that. You can go anywhere in San Jose as a tourist and you will never look out of place. It'll never seem strange that you're there as a foreigner, but you do the same thing in Managua. And while you are welcome everywhere, there are loads and loads of areas of the city where it's quite surprising that you as an expat or a foreigner would show up. And so those capital cities alone give an immense difference of feel as to how the nation as a whole is going to operate in a place where you, you can't contrive it. It has to be a reflection of what the country looks like. So for us, when we were looking at places that we wanted to live, these things dramatically ruled out Costa Rica right from the start. We wanted a low-cost location, and that could be low-cost like Spain, Italy, Greece, or Romania. Those are all places that we seriously considered living in. We did live, but, but considered for our permanent home. All of them are very cost-effective, much cheaper than Costa Rica, uh, with cheap housing, cheap food, great weather, lots of things that, that make them attractive. Costa Rica having prices that are much more similar to the United States than to low-cost locations makes it a bit of an odd choice for anyone to be an expat in unless you have just tens or hundreds of millions of dollars or more to a point where the amount you pay for your housing, the amount you pay for your food, the amount you pay for services are not things that you're worried about. That, you know, obviously at some point you have enough funds that you simply don't care how expensive something is and it doesn't matter how far your money will go, you will always have more money than matters. So for those people, Costa Rica could be amazing if that was the only consideration because they don't care how far their money goes. But other than that, 
all of Latin America, the other 16 Latin American countries out of 17 total, all offer a lot more bang for the buck. And I know that some of you are going to say, look, money is not everything, and you can't look at it that way, or everyone would simply go to the lowest cost location, and that would be that. And you're absolutely right. That is far from the only consideration. And it's also your lifestyle can make one place versus another be cheaper or more expensive. For some people, Nicaragua is more uh, uh, less expensive than Colombia. But for the majority of people, Colombia is less expensive. But it does matter what type of housing you want, what type of community you want, how you spend your day, right? There's little things that can vary that. Uh, but some of the lowest cost locations, it's not like a simple, clear winner for everyone as to which one is the cheapest. And I've had some people here on the channel argue that Nicaragua isn't that cheap because in their specific situation, they really want to own very old vehicles that are very large and gas guns and they want to do unbelievably large amounts of driving on a day-to-day -day basis, all things that are culturally not normal in Nicaragua and unexpected and, and very difficult to have happen. But if that is what happens to you, then the fact that our fuel is a little bit more expensive than neighboring countries or, or throughout larger amounts of the region could impact your uh, balance of cost of living to make it a little bit more expensive here rather than a little bit less. Whereas most of us, the average person, is driving a super small car that's very fuel efficient and uh, minimizes driving because driving just takes a long time here. So most of us uh, make an effort by living in Nicaragua to skew away from unnecessary uh, fuel consumption. And because of that, because the lifestyle encourages that, we generally see uh, the cost of fuel here being less in an absolute sense than in than in most other countries because we simply use less, not because it's cheaper per gallon, but that's that's how it typically is approached. So that's a lifestyle thing that will determine some of that for you. Not that it's expensive here; it's just a little bit more than some neighboring countries. But but when you are using a lot of it, that little bit can be noticeable. So uh, so. In general, when we're looking at most of Latin America, we have a pretty competitive cost of living environment. There are some places that skew towards expensive, like Chile, and there are some places that skew towards inexpensive, like Honduras. But in general, the, the range from the least expensive cost of living to the most expensive cost of living is not a really big swing. The cheapest being like Colombia and Nicaragua under normal circumstances, the most expensive being Costa Rica, Panama, and Chile under normal circumstances. With that, Costa Rica generally for cost of living ranks far and away above the other countries. It's not that it is very close to the pack. It is generally quite a bit ahead, and that can cause uh, a real concern for choosing it as the place to go. If you're looking at cost of living benefits, it is the absolute worst country to choose for mainland uh, Americas because it's so much more expensive than anywhere else, assuming that the U.S. and Canada are not where you're considering going, but where you're considering coming from. Uh, if you're coming from, you know, Europe or something, then, you know, you would have a bigger pool, but then those would be too expensive as well. But for those of us coming from North America and, and presumably one of the benefits for almost everyone, truly, the, the people who are moving to Latin America, yes, you want to love the culture. Yes, you want to love whatever weather you're going to. But, but Latin America has everything. The language and a certain amount of the culture is the unifying uh, characteristic across the region. Once you're past, okay, I like the culture, I, I'm good with the language, what is my driving factor for Latin America? Beyond that, it is cost of living improvements. And while Costa Rica does offer, under normal circumstances, a small cost of living improvement over the United States or Canada, that improvement is minor, whereas essentially all the rest of Latin America, the benefit is major. And so people who are looking for a place to retire, for a place for their money to go farther, for a place where they're just going to get more from life because they very rarely does any human have unlimited money that they can just throw around and it doesn't matter, then Costa Rica would be off anyone's list. That it ever becomes the, the natural place for people to consider is really quite surprising because with the, any research, Costa Rica would normally be off. Of all the people I talk to, I have never once in all the years of talking to friends, family, I do relocation consulting, uh, just live streams, many expats that I talk to all over the world, never once have I met a person 
who had a factor that made Costa Rica a reasonable choice to have considered in the first place. That's the thing that's amazing. If someone does the analysis of where they might want to live, the one place in all of Latin America that I can get almost anyone to articulate instantly, that's the obvious one to rule out as the clear choice that doesn't make sense for them, is consistently Costa Rica. Again, I love Costa Rica. It is a beautiful country. I love that it is so close and that I can go to it at any time at the drop of a hat and utilize their beautiful country as a tourist destination. If you're just going to travel and you want to you know, be a tourist, you want to go sit on the beach for a few days, you want to go eat at lots of wonderful restaurants and like going to Disney World, you're willing to spend a premium because it's your vacation and you just want everything to be amazing and, and catered to you and smooth. Yes, Costa Rica is fantastic, and I love that we have them so nearby. So much of Latin America has to travel really far to take advantage of Costa Rica's tourism infrastructure. We're really lucky, and that is a big vote for Nicaragua as a place to live. That, that gives us a, a serious leg up on Honduras or El Salvador, for sure. They have to travel all the way through Nicaragua to get down there. They have to consider a flight instead of just hopping in a car and running down. I can be in Costa Rica before most people in Honduras or El Salvador could be off the tarmac uh, on a flight, and I can do so for a fraction of the cost, obviously, because I'm just paying for a very small amount of fuel. It's To get to the border to Costa Rica is only half of a charge on an electric car's battery for most electric cars. That's how close it is, right? That's, that's pretty amazing when you think of it that way, that that's how easy it is to get there. Costa Rica's other big draw for a lot of expats is that essentially the entire country, and I'm overstating this by a lot, but the country acts much like an American enclave. It's not really that the whole country does, but incredibly large swaths of it do. And even areas that are not within those enclave areas act like a kind of soft transitional enclave. And getting to areas that are purely Costa Rican and have that complete gap of American and Canadian influence takes effort and is relatively isolated. They certainly exist, but they are quite isolated. So when you're looking at Costa Rica, the driving factor for a lot of people are, they didn't really want to leave the United States. They don't really want to leave Canada, but they do want a little bit lower cost of living. And that's certainly a benefit just in the grand scheme of things, even if it's not nearly as much as the other countries that are options. But they want a place that's going to have loads of traditional chain restaurants that they're used to or restaurants that have uh, similar just values to what they're they're used to uh, in their home country. So right, you can go to the mall and have like the same lineup at uh, the food court. You can go out uh, through a, like a restaurant strip on the highway and maybe it'll be different names, but the style of food, the, the range range of selections are going to be things that they're used to and it's going to satisfy those things. And, and to give some concrete examples, living in Nicaragua, often people are like, well, I want to go out for Indian, I want to go out for Thai, I want to go out for Japanese, I want to go out for, you start naming all these things. And I kind of feel like, you know, not all at once, obviously, I feel like an American fast food burger, I feel like, you know, tacos from Taco Bell, like there's just some things that you that you want often as someone coming from North America, because it's food you're used to. And if you're in Nicaragua, Half of those items are not available and half of them are very isolated. Well, we can go to Managua and there's this one restaurant that does that. And you're like, wait, wait, are you saying in the entire country I have to travel to the capital and I got one option? And if I don't like it or it's inconvenient, that's all I get? In many cases, yes, that is what we're saying. And in Costa Rica, generally, you're going to find that there are, first of all, it's a smaller country and things are spread out. So if you, uh, uh, like options are spread out. So if you're in Liberia, you're going to get a lot of those options. If you're in the capital, San Jose, you're going to get every possible option. If you're out in the Nicoya, you're going to get lots of those options out there. If you're in Limon, there's going to be lots of those options there. Everywhere you go, you're going to have at least the majority of, if not all of the standard options that you would want. Nicaragua, anything but the case. So, so that is a very important thing for people who want to not change their culture, which that's fine. Like there's nothing wrong with not wanting to change your culture. But if you don't want to change your culture and you're coming to Nicaragua, you're probably going to be fighting an uphill battle and just be generally unhappy. Nobody in the country is trying to accommodate that. That is not Nicaragua's goal. That is not, you know, any particular, you know, region's goal, maybe San Juan del Sur, but even there, it's not. And in Costa Rica, you're going to find maybe not everyone, but the government really makes a focus on, yes, we're willing to accommodate this because it's what makes Costa Rica unique. And you have huge areas like the Nicoya Peninsula that are just completely focused on that, and Liberia completely focused on that. And you can go to these big areas, not just a, an enclosed little gated community, but to entire towns and regions and cities that are focused on the expat experience and bringing all of these things to you. And 
uh, and, and if that it fulfills your, your goals and you don't care so much about the money, then that could be a really big draw for Costa Rica. But for those who have watched my channel, one, if you just know me, but two, every time we talk about what were our criteria for considering a place, we want to be integrated into the culture. We absolutely do not want to bring our North American with us. We're not trying to enforce that on anyone as much as we can possibly do. And we uh, do not want to be looking for an enclave where we can be isolated from the local culture, anything but the case. We want to be as deep in the local culture as we possibly can be one of our goals because we're North American. So no matter where we go, our home life has a lot of North Americanism in it. My wife and I were both brought up in North America our entire lives, so there's, our children are not going to be isolated from that. Just like one of our criteria, and Costa Rica certainly meets this, uh, is that we want to live in a place that does not speak English, because we want our children to be indoctrinated into another language, so it's, it becomes part of their just able to be bilingual, as opposed to like l living in the United States and learning a second language. It is very rare. Some people are linguistic experts, but for most people, the amount of a second language that you learn, even if you put an effort into it, is generally really small. There is very few places where you can go and practice legitimate languages uh, in a way that, that you could actually become fluent. Having lived in Texas for a really long time and now living in Nicaragua, what we learn is that there weren't any resources, very, very few, for learning Spanish in Texas. And identifying which ones were actually speaking Spanish would be pretty hard because the average person who says they speak Spanish in Texas wouldn't be considered a Spanish speaker in Latin America. Their Spanish is Spanglish. There's so much English mixed into it, and it is so divergent from what is considered Spanish that... You know, of course you can find native Spanish speakers who've moved there, but you have to really seek them out and understand that's what you're looking for. Even just reading billboards as you go down the road, you're like, that's not Spanish. Like, they're wrong all the time. And I'm not that good of a Spanish speaker uh, to, to just constantly be bombarded every time I'm in the United States with. This is illiterate Spanish everywhere. Um, makes it very difficult. So that's something we wanted for our kids. And so of course, Costa Rica is fine. For the language, it is simply an accent, and they speak a very standard Spanish, same as anywhere else for the most part. Um, although we do find it very hard as Nicaraguans to understand Costa Ricans, the accent is thick and very different. You would not expect it's very different, and the slang is quite different from Nicaragua. So you can be pretty uh, good at Guatemalan, which is very like considered neutral, or Nicaraguan Spanish, which is anything but neutral, but you get used to it. And then you go to Costa Rica, and you're just like, I, I give up. This is not what I learned. But of course, if you learn in Costa Rica, then it would be the opposite effect, right? Guatemala and Nicaragua would be so hard to learn. Um, so from a cultural perspective, we know they're going to get English at home. We don't need anyone to teach them English. They got that. Uh, they're going to get North American culture at home, North American traditions, all that stuff. They, we've got that. We don't need any of that external. So what we don't have um, is Latin American culture. Now, I realize that's not a single culture. It's not a monoculture. But he, like here in Nicaragua, we want Nicaraguan culture. And it's one of the reasons that we choose to live in a barrio on the outskirts of a secondary city. This region, Sutiava, where we live, is a large barrio that has essentially no expats. And living here means that everyday interactions, everything from going to the market, going to the local coffee shop, uh, going out and, and shopping, um, walking down the street, going to festivals, restaurants, anything like that, we're doing everything the same as Nicaraguans would. There's really no restaurants, there's one or two, based around tourists. But the most touristy restaurant in Leon, El Sisteo, on the plaza, absolutely touristy restaurant. On any given day, 50% or more of the people that are in there are Nicaraguans. Even the touristy places are only so much tourist destinations. It is that they have some tourists there is what makes them a tourist destination. Whereas in Costa Rica, if you're a touristy place, the expectation is that there's only tourists there, that locals wouldn't go because it's not a good deal and it's not what they're looking for. Here, they're providing enough of a location or service or uh, English menu to make uh, tourists feel comfortable there. But essentially all places outside of San Juan del Sur and Granada have to make they're living from Nicaraguans because that's who's going to be going there all the time. So, so living out here was a very intentional choice, both Nicaragua as a whole, because we wanted a country that would ensure our children had the opportunity to become a part of the culture um, where we would not be always seen as a part like Costa Rica. You never really become Costa Rican. You're always a part. And of course, as a gringo living in Nicaragua, there's a certain amount of you're always a gringo. But 
living in Sutiava, putting in time here, working to be, you know, members of the community, really feels like the level of integration we've had here, the level of acceptance as Nicaraguans that we have had here after just, to be fair, as much as nine years, depending on how you look at it. And one way we we first came here nine years ago, we were here some so a few times, and then we moved over three years ago, and have been here completely ever since. So in some ways you could say, well, we've only been here for three years, but in other ways you can say, well, you've kind of been here for nine years. In reality, to give a, a, a good mental picture, it's somewhere in the middle. With that small amount of time here in Nicaragua, we already feel like valuable members of the community, like we're accepted as part of our community. And that's really important. That's something that there aren't very many places that we would be able to get in a reasonable amount of time. And in some places we would never be able to get. So that's unique and special. And of course, there's lots of places where you can do that. And I encourage a lot of you, not all, but a lot of you, this is the kind of thing you should be looking for. And figuring out how to evaluate that, what is likely to be a place where you can actually become a part of that place rather than simply being a tourist who never left, which is how, if you go to Costa Rica, very few people ever feel anything but like they are simply a permanent tourist, which some people do want. The permanent vacation that is simply uh, always being a visitor to the place where you live. But for most of us, the idea that you're a visitor where you live doesn't actually sound very attractive. And there's lots of reasons why you want to be part of a community. That's how you uh, meet deep or make deep friendships. It's how you uh, meet more people. It's how you expand uh, your worldview. Uh, it's how you maintain your mental health and, and have social support networks. Uh, those things are often lacking, at least to some degree, when you're in expat communities and isolated from the communities that you live in and simply acting like a tourist because the people around you also act like and feel like tourists and everyone feels very transient and disconnected and it doesn't take much before everyone has a very different kind of outlook on life and on other people uh, which can lead to in many cases dangerous situations it is very common when you have large groups of expats together with that feeling of being tourists that they're very likely to see each other as targets for scams or uh, you know money making opportunities rather than friends and neighbors neighbors that are looking out for each other. That's a really important difference. Of course, it doesn't happen always, but it is extremely common in enclaves and extremely rare outside of them. So for us, these things made Nicaragua and several other countries very prominent options, but made Costa Rica one of the worst for what we were looking for. There's very little of what we want that Costa Rica would be a viable option. Now, of course, if you were to say to me, look, Scott, the rest of the world is gone. You're being teleported into Costa Rica and that's where you have to live now. I would not be terribly upset. I mean, I'd be upset that the rest of the world was gone, but Costa Rica is a very nice place full of nice people and great food and, you know, interesting uh, museums and, and music and, and culture. And it has beautiful mountains and, and outdoor activities. And there's just, it, it's a nice place, but it would not be a place that I would in any way choose above very many places I've been. In fact, of all the places I have traveled in the world, Costa Rica definitely ranks very low on my would want to live in list, but it remains high on my want to visit list, which is important, right? There are places that we like to go. We like to spend a little bit of time, but we don't want to move there. Not every time that you vacation do you actually want to move to a place. I do like going to Disney World and taking my kids there and spending a lot of money and doing some rides and shows and just doing the Disney and Universal Studios experience, right? I think we all understand the fun of doing something like that, even if those aren't particularly your things. But I also have zero desire. In fact, I would absolutely hate having to move to Orlando. I don't want to even move to Florida or the U.S., let alone Orlando, one of the worst cities and one of the worst states uh, in one of my last choice countries. Well, of everywhere I've been, my definite last choice country for permanent residency. It's just not where I want to be. But visiting it is really nice. And I'm glad I get to do that sometimes. Costa Rica is like that. And there needs to be places like this. Everyone has places that they do want to see, they do enjoy, but they don't want to make it their home. Costa Rica is an ideal candidate for that. I like being able to go there all the time. I love being able to use their airports. I appreciate that Costa Rica makes those things available to me uh, as someone who lives in Nicaragua and in the region. Um, and I love that I can go to a, a city with cooler weather and loads of restaurants. And I'm fine paying premiums to stay in hotels there and to eat premium priced food, go shopping in premium uh, malls and, and shopping centers and, and city downtowns and walk the city. And I like that I get to go film there and I 
like that I have the option. I don't really do this one, but going to the beach and staying in a fancy resort. Once in a while, you may want to do that. I've never actually wanted to do that, but if I get that urge, which I probably will someday, that's where I will go. Uh, I have the option to go do eco-touristy stuff, which I totally plan to do. My kids want to do some of those like bigger things that, that everybody talks about and, and we just haven't done. Like we do cultural Costa Rica and practical Costa Rica. We haven't done that super touristy making an effort going out to the different uh, resorts kind of Costa Rica. So that's stuff that I want to do in the future. That's all really great. And I encourage you, if you have never been to Costa Rica, it's a great holiday destination. And for some of you who are looking for exactly the opposite of me and most anyone you meet in Nicaragua, where you don't want to integrate with the culture, you don't want to save money, you're and not that you don't want to, but you're not prioritizing it. And you are happy with a very Americanized, very heavy English speaking, most people are okay with that kind of large scale enclave feel, then Costa Rica is probably your top choice. But for people who are watching my channel, I would say it's extremely rare that I've spoken to someone who watches my channel. And if you think logically about what my content is often about, it definitely leans towards or encourages an audience who are looking for uh, deep cultural integration, who are looking for something off the beaten path. And that's another thing. If you're looking for adventure, which is probably not very often something that people really prioritize, but you may lean towards, I want an adventurous uh, experience, something that's, you know, the path less traveled that my friends and family are like, you're going where? Versus I want something that's super comfortable and I feel like everyone has done it. There's guides and I just do what someone else did and I don't have to figure anything out on my own. On this side, Costa Rica really is just so many people do it. You can, you don't need to worry about finding resources. And if you're coming to Nicaragua, you know, this past week has really shown sometimes you have to go out and get this information yourself. You can't go rely on anything you see online. You can't go rely on expat communities. They don't have the resources. There aren't people doing the same thing as you within a close proximity of time to be able to come. It just, it's very complicated. So you're much more on your own or, or, you know, forging your own path. Of course, there are other aspects of Nicaragua that make us want to choose this over Costa Rica. For example, the crime rate here is about one third that what it is in Costa Rica, at least when it comes to violent crime, the thing that actually matters to the majority of people. Petty crime, normally we don't care one way or the other. Obviously, we would prefer if it was lower, but we don't evaluate countries based on it. That would be relatively foolish. It is extremely rare that you have a country with so much petty crime that it becomes something you actually consciously have to worry about, uh, as opposed to violent crime, which makes it something you have to worry about all the time. Now, here here in Nicaragua, there's so little violent crime that people present petty crime as if that's violent crime, which is very confusing. If you talk to locals, uh, they will refer to things like getting your pockets picked or someone snatching something out of your backpack or grabbing a camera like my GoPro that I walk around with like a selfie stick. It's not exactly so it's basically a selfie stick. If I walk around with that, they're like, people will grab that and take off. It's really dangerous. And I'm like, did you just say grabbing something out of my hand is really dangerous? Like, like Nicaraguans have a different concept of what danger is based on how safe it is here uh, compared to like Costa Rica or somewhere else where when they say that an area is dangerous, like don't go into this barrio, that's dangerous. They don't mean someone might pick your wallet out of your pocket. They mean someone might mug you, someone might pull a knife or something. Uh, so it's, it's a very different thing. Uh, so, so those are reasons that we prefer Nicaragua, but that's not a reason we've avoided Costa Rica by any stretch. Is it? Uh, it's quite dangerous for the region. It's not Honduras dangerous, but it's far more dangerous than uh, El Salvador, Nicaragua, a bit more than Panama. So that is a, is a factor, but it, they, you'd have to really be getting down to making very close decisions, which I don't think very many people really would. I, I, and this might be the really important thing. Of people who are legitimately looking at Costa Rica, Nicaragua probably shouldn't be on your radar. And of people who are legitimately looking at Nicaragua, Costa Rica probably shouldn't be on your radar. These are two countries that don't make the same short list. Both of them are leading contenders for very different lists. Costa Rica, if you want that enclave style living, you want that kind of American experience with that heavy duty tourist infrastructure, enclavey feeling, Costa Rica should be really close to, if not, the top of your Latin American shortlist. And if you're looking for heavy integration, getting away from the expats, less touristy, less infrastructure, more integration with society, and uh, just, just 
not being enclavey in any way whatsoever, then Nicaragua should be at the top of your list. And while it's possible to find ways to have that Nicaraguan kind of style in Costa Rica, and there are ways to kind of have that enclave life in Nicaragua, both are very fringe within their communities. And so that is why anyone can consider any country, of course. But by and large, the people for whom Costa Rica is a good option will find that Nicaragua is not. And those that find that Nicaragua is a good option will find that Costa Rica is not. Uh, people who are considering Costa Rica legitimately are probably also looking at or should be looking at places like Panama and Guatemala and Mexico, Colombia. And there's a lot of places that overlap. Chile, uh, Argentina, Uruguay, and people who are looking at Nicaragua should probably be looking at a different pool, some of them overlapping. Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, uh, be looking at Venezuela, of course, Bolivia, Peru, Colombia again, uh, Argentina again, right? So some of them are overlapping because they have factors that, that work in both directions, but there are some that are very much apart. And so that's the understanding that these are different lists, that these are not countries you're very likely going to compare. And of course, comparing them can be useful and there are very close situations. Well, I want to be in the Nicoya. I have all these reasons I want to be in the Nicoya, except I hear that you could be on the Nicaraguan side and it's much cheaper, but I still have access to the Nicoya pretty, sim pretty, pretty quickly. Yes, that is potentially true. And that is a draw for that one little tiny corner of Nicaragua. We do get a lot of people who, for some reason or another, can't be in Costa Rica or don't want to be in Costa Rica, but essentially want to be in Costa Rica. And so there's a little clump up against the border there. And I'm sure there's a small clump the other direction of Costa Rican uh, people who live in Costa Rica, but want to be in Nicaragua for some reason. However, the difference is Costa Rica is very expensive. So people who are on a tight budget but want to be in Costa Rica will need to clump up against the Costa Rican border within Nicaragua. But those in Costa Rica who want to be in Nicaragua uh, generally find that because it's a lower cost of living and it's generally an easier to enter country, they will simply go to Nicaragua instead of being in Costa Rica. So the effect is mostly one directional, but not entirely, but mostly. So you're gonna find that those people just come to Nicaragua when we have them here. So when you're first starting your investigation and really don't know anything about the different countries in the region, I understand why it seems very logical that Costa Rica and Nicaragua would be direct comparisons. They have a lot of underlying history and culture that would definitely make you say, these have got to be places I got to put in a pro and cons list and try to figure out which one I actually want to be in. But I think once you actually dig into understanding what these countries are like on the ground, and I totally know that when you have not been to these countries, that can be the farthest thing from something you can do in your head. The feel of being in Costa Rica and the feel of being in Nicaragua are so completely different, even though they sit physically so close together, that it's often hard to explain. And something that uh, with a lot of people that I talked to, uh, I was talking with Eric from Generic Expats just the other day, and one of the really tough things that we have on our channels, because we love to show Latin America in general, is that no matter how much we show and explain, we really have a hard time conveying the concept of what it feels like to be in the country, what it's like interacting with people as you walk down the street, what the air smells like, what the just vibe is. To some degree, we get that across, but far less than you would think, far less than you would wish, for sure. And so watching videos of this is Nicaragua and this is Costa Rica, it's very difficult to pick out uh, exactly how what you're seeing in the video reflects real life on what scale and what way, how does it, you know, if we're showing a mall in Costa Rica, well, is this the only mall in Costa Rica or is all of Costa Rica covered in malls like this? Is it like the U S where you can go to any town and find this, or is there just this one in San Jose? And then the same thing in Nicaragua. And in one case, no, there is stuff like this all over the country. And in the other, nope, this is unique. There's this one, right. And, and, you know, when you see a, you know, fields and countryside and, and you're like, oh, this wide open kind of old prairie west with all these big expansive, is this, is this common in Costa Rica? No, it's not. And you're in Nicaragua. Yes. It's not just that we can show it to you. It's that it's mile after mile after mile and you're driving on the highways and you see this all the time. Those are things you very difficult to convey in videos. We can give you these snippets. We can give you these, these flashes of what life is like in any of the countries, but to actually put it together and say, oh, I see. When I'm in Costa Rica, I will anticipate this is how my life is. And when I'm in Nicaragua, I'll anticipate this is how my life is. These are totally different things. I have 
very little situation where I would actually then have to compare them. One of them or the other, I can just rule out because it's not what I'm looking for. And then, of course, there's some people who are like, I don't really know what I'm looking for. I've never lived in an enclave. I've never lived away from an enclave. I've never lived in a foreign country. I've never visited a foreign country, right? You put those things out there and pretty soon it's like, well, how can I not compare them? But one of the hardest things then will be, how could you compare them at all, right? And, and then that's why we encourage you so much to get on a plane and come to these countries. Once you determine that there isn't some showstopper in the country, oh, they're currently at war and it's the borders are closed. Well, rule that out, right? Don't go to Yemen this year. And if you're, you know, but once, once you have that, uh, this is, you know, Costa Rica, I could, I could do it, right? The safety's okay. The language is okay. The location's okay. The time zone's okay. You know, those, it checks all the I can consider it boxes. Oh, in Nicaragua. Oh, it checks all the I can consider it boxes too. Then if you really have no scope for comparing beyond that, and of course, generic expats and, and my channel and, and others work to try to give you those tools as best we can. Uh, if, if we can't give you enough, and I totally understand why we can't, then coming down and spending even just a few days in Costa Rica, maybe a week, and a week in Nicaragua will, in two weeks, give you a definitive answer, almost certainly, that you can say, oh, I enjoyed my vacation in Nicaragua, but it's, it's not my vibe. But I went to Costa Rica and magically that's what I'm looking for. Now I know. Now I don't have to go back and keep looking at Nicaragua except for when I want to take a vacation from my home in Costa Rica. But I want to go up to Granada and I want to do a week. You know, great. Or vice versa. You find it. Right. There's a reason why we think that coming down and putting boots on the ground is so critical so early in your process. Because in many cases, it's these, it's these big differences you're going to find right away. So I hope that answers your question. I hope that's, that's clear. Costa Rica is great love Costa Rica. It's just not a home for me and my family, but a, a great resource. And, and for so many of my audience who are looking and saying, you know, Nicaragua has all these things I like, but I can't find myself being in a situation where, I, where I'm going to want to integrate into this community, where I'm going to want to learn Spanish, where I'm going to want to uh, adjust what I eat uh, because they don't have all the, the menu options I'm used to. And I just, I'm not willing to forge my own path and be creative. I, I just need it all spelled out. And yes, I understand it's more expensive, but I need that structure and I need other expats, not just once in a while, not just I went out to the bar and ran into some friends, but I need like when I walk out my door that everyone's in the same boat as me and we all understand each other and we all going the shared experiences and and mostly we're all on vacation together that costa rica is such a great answer for you so if you'd like to help support the channel you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash scott allen miller if you would take a moment to hit that like button subscribe if you haven't I, I will do content in costa rica i try to do uh one to two weeks down there per year it depends on what my travel schedule is but costa rica is a great area to explore my family loves going there it's a beautiful country and uh if if even if you're not considering moving there, visiting it, it is a great tourist destination. Much like if you were coming to the United States or had an opportunity to go and said, should I see this Disney World thing? I would, yes, it is a absolutely, I know it's expensive, I know it's special. It is a place you should hit. And Costa Rica falls into kind of that, uh, but from a, you know, Disney does it from a, a contrived, fake amusement park kind of thing. Costa Rica has the same kind of, this is unique and you've got to hit it vibe, but from a Central American wildlife and ecology kind of thing. It's very unique and very special. Uh, and so if you're looking for that place to go, and if you're just needing that, like, I need a place where I can go and kickstart my adventure of exploring the world and I don't know where to go first, Nicaragua is a great choice because we're so safe and so accessible, but we don't have the tourist in infrastructure, and sometimes that can be daunting to someone who's a little bit nervous about that stuff or, or lacks some resources. Costa Rica will fix that. Start in Costa Rica, get a little bit of comfort, and then Nicaragua could be that much more accessible for you if you're ready to branch out and see a very different option very nearby. Or fly into Costa Rica, give yourself a week, drive into Nicaragua all in one trip so you can see them compared at exactly the same time, one to the other, in it's with the same weather, the same time of year and everything. Uh, you'll, you'll find it a very valuable experience. Experience, I guarantee, even if neither one ends up being the top of your short list for what you're looking for, or if you're just taking a vacation, what a vacation that could be. But give it more than two weeks. If it's your one time visiting the area, there is more to see than that. If you would be so kind as to post on social media or tell a friend and family member or both about the show, that would be absolutely fantastic. And I will see all of you tomorrow. And when I pop up four videos on the screen, if I actually get around to doing it, click on one of those and help support the channel by telling the algorithm that this is something it should be recommending.